The PlayStation Store is running two sales right now, the Big in Japan sale and the under $20 sale. In this video, I want to primarily focus on the Big in Japan sale because there are a lot of great deals as a part of that sale. I want to highlight 10 great deals as a part of said sale, so without further ado, let's get right into it. First up, we have Star Ocean, the last whole 4K and full HD remaster. I wanted to give this a shout because Star Ocean has been one of those franchises that has really gone to the wayside. Uh, the hope and integrity and faith assist, whatever that game was called, Star Ocean 5, that game was just not very good. The Last Hope, on the other hand, it's a pretty good JRPG, all things considered. Some comical voice acting, mind you, but the gameplay is really good. The world still holds up really well, and there's some really nice set pieces, and I think the strengths definitely outweigh the negatives, and for $10.49 is a really good buy. You never played a Star Ocean game, this wouldn't be a bad place to start. Definitely don't start with Star Ocean 5 because that left a lot to be desired. Alright, next up, one of my favorite JRPGs that I always go to bat for is seeing a new low price point, and that is Tales of Vesperia, the Definitive Edition. It is 60% off for $19.99. What a fantastic game this is. Now, the Tales of games, generally speaking, do carry over mechanically from game to game. Uh, really, what sets them apart is the characters and the storyline and Tales of Vesperia I think is really strong on both ends. Tales of Vesperia has a great cast of characters, one of the best main characters that you're going to find in a JRPG and the rest of the cast is very endearing as well and the story isn't anything mind blowing or anything out of this world but it's fine and it's perfectly acceptable. And of course, I say that Tales of generally retains the same fundamentals, but it's obviously being turned on its head with the next Tales of game, Tales of Arise. Hopefully we see more of that game sooner rather than later, probably at the Summer Game Fest. But nonetheless, Tales of Vesperia right now for $19.99 is a great pickup. Valkyria Chronicles Remastered and Valkyria Chronicles 4 Bundle is 55% off for $17.99. This might be the best deal in the entire sale, getting two robust JRPGs for the price of one. I mean, price uh, less than the price of a lot of games that are on sale. $17.99 for VC 1 and 4 is great. Valkyria Chronicles 4 especially I feel like is a great game for newcomers to JRPGs. Valkyria Chron uh, Chronicles 1 is really good as well. Unfortunately, it is incredibly challenging to the point where some people might be turned off by it in the later stages of the game. You can beat it, no problem, but if you're not well-versed in strategy games and you're not super into, you know, tactics-based game, VC1 is going to be a little bit of a challenge. VC4, on the other hand, does have an easy mode, and if you put on the easy mode, there are still times that are relatively challenging, but you can go through the game no problem, and it's not going to be a big deal. Both games have a plethora of side content as well, and the story is great. It's very engaging to a Western audience as well, just engaging war stories. Can't go wrong with that. And a cast of characters that is also incredibly endearing and incredibly engaging. A lot of emotional moments as well. And the story is told through the use of an awesome watercolor storybook. And that's just a very unique to a, neat, a unique way to present a story out of a JRPG. Instead of just having, you know, your typical overworld, exploring, going from town to town, whatever. Obviously, that formula works, but something a little bit different. That's what Valkyria Chronicles offers, and it does it rather well. Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen is 67% off for $9.89. This is a great buy. One of Capcom's best games they put out in recent memories, and obviously it's a relatively challenging game. A lot of people will compare the game to Souls, but it is very much different. It's set in a big open world. The combat is incredibly engaging, and it is, again, it's difficult, but it's also incredibly rewarding. Games need to strike a balance between being challenging and being rewarding, and Dragon's Dogma really strikes that perfect balance, and this version also includes the Dark Arisen expansion, which wasn't included in the base version of the game when it came out on the PS3. It is just a stacked experience, and it runs relatively well on the PlayStation 4 as well. One of the issues with the original release was from a technical standpoint and its technical limitations. Those handcuffs are obviously completely removed when you're talking about the PlayStation 4 version. Alright, next up, Final Fantasy 15, the Royal Edition is 50% off for $17.49. Final Fantasy XV is such a controversial game, man. I really enjoyed it. However, let's be real, the storyline was an absolute dumpster fire. It left a lot to be desired. And yes, the Royal Edition does make it considerably better by including the DLC, and you don't get that in the original game. It was just crazy how they did it and how they added the DLC. And if you guys played the game, you know what I'm talking about. You also get the Royal Edition upgrade, so this version of the game is a lot better than the initial one, and I do like a lot of elements of Final Fantasy XV. The open world is gorgeous, the combat system is great, the visuals are obviously stunning. If you remove the storytelling from the game, I think Final Fantasy XV is an incredibly enjoyable game, and if you do go all in and you watch Kingsglaive, the Final Fantasy XV movie, and then you do watch the anime series, and you watch all of the exterior content outside of the base game, then yes, maybe the story will come together 
together and you'll enjoy it. However, when you compare it to some of the best Final Fantasy stories that are out there, FF15 does leave a lot to be desired on that end. However, there are some elements that are so strong that I still wanted to give it a recommendation, especially at a $17.50 price point. Alright, another Final Fantasy game. This one was also one of the more controversial ones, Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age. Now, The Zodiac Age has the benefit where over time, I feel like this game has just aged like fine wine, where people look back at it now and they legitimately see The Zodiac Age as one of the best Final Fantasy games in the entire series. Maybe that's a little bit hyperbolic. I don't necessarily think so. I loved FF15. 12 when it came out back in 06, picked it up day one. Loved the combat system. While I wasn't in love with Vaughn as a main character, there were characters like Botch, Ash, Balthier that were incredibly engaging, and Final Fantasy 12 had a ridiculous amount of content that could keep you busy for a very, very long time. Zodiac Age just got an update as well, and it's a great game. At $25, it's a little bit pricey. However, I thought so highly of FF12 that I'm still gonna say it's a well worth pickup. Next up, I want to give a shout out to a Mega Man game. Mega Man 11 is 50% off for $14.99. I gotta give Capcom a lot of credit for revitalizing Mega Man from what it was just a couple of years ago. From Mega Man 11, the Mega Man X collection, we just had the Mega Man Zero collection, which was fantastic. Mega Man 11 is a terrific terrific game set in the old school style of Mega Man, but also adding a new school twist, especially with the visuals. Obviously, it's not the lengthiest game in the world. The Mega Man games are never known to be absolutely filled with content. However, they are incredibly replayable, and it's a game that I find myself going back to on a pretty regular basis. I love the Blue Bomber. Mega Man is one of those franchises that I am incredibly nostalgic with, and you got a variety of extra modes, including time trials, missions, global leaderboards, a gallery of concept art, and more. Definitely do give Mega Man 11 a look. There is a free demo available if you'd rather go that route. And if you've never in enjoyed Mega Man, if you've never given it a chance, definitely do give Mega Man a look as it's a franchise that is on the come up and making a big comeback. Alright, another IP that I'm a big fan of, Naruto. I want to give a shout out to Naruto Shippuden, the Ultimate Ninja Storm Legacy. Now, if you are a Naruto fan, I feel like this is a must-own on the PlayStation 4. This includes everything. Naruto Storm 1, Naruto Storm 2, Naruto Storm 3, and then you get Naruto Storm 4 Road to Bruto. All that for $35 is a pretty ridiculous deal and you get so much content and even if you're not the biggest Naruto fan, hold with me for a second, I do think there's fun to be had in these games, especially with Storm 2, Storm 3, and Storm 4 because the fights are just so ridiculous. They enhance them from the anime as well, especially in Storm 4. The last fight in particular is just absolutely crazy in uh, the video game. There are other fights in Storm 3 and Storm 4 that are just enhanced quite a bit and they're a little bit over the top at times if you watch the anime, but still over the top in the best way possible. Possible. Storm 2 is a more one-to-one -one correlation of what happened in the anime. A lot of the fights are directly taken from there and play out the exact same way, which is definitely not bad. They still look great in video game four, uh, video game form, I should say. Storm 2 encompasses the first 150 or so episodes of Shippuden. Unfortunately, Storm 1 is the one that really falls behind. If Storm 1 had a quality single-player campaign, I would even say, hey, Naruto Storm is not a bad way to experience the entire Naruto story. Is it ideal? No, but it looks so good. It plays so good that it would be a decent way. Storm 1, unfortunately, falters on the campaign end, so that is a little bit of a bummer, but still, the good definitely outweighs the bad here, and for $35, you're getting a lot of content. Next up, another great Capcom title, an old-school title in Okami HD. This is a game that I constantly go to bat for, and I will go to bat for until I get the confirmation of Okami 2. Okami is tremendous, often compared to The Legend of Zelda in the best way possible. It obviously has its own unique elements, but that visual style definitely resembles some Something like a Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Okami has some great gameplay, great story as well, very emotional. And I know some of you guys are going to be like, why do you keep complaining about Okami 2? There's Okami Den on the Nintendo DS. Well, Okami Den is not the same as an Okami 2. And do your part, buy Okami HD, enjoy the hell out of it at $9.99, and then hopefully sooner rather than later, we will get an Okami 2 from Capcom. I don't have much faith at this point, I don't have much hope, but hey. We've seen crazier. If Beyond Good and Evil 2 can happen, Okami 2 damn sure can happen. And lastly, do want to give a shout to Persona Dancing Endless Night Collection. This includes three games, Persona 3 Dancing in Moonlight, Persona 5 Dancing in Starlight, as well as Persona 4 Dancing All Night. Obviously, you know this is a music rhythm game based on Persona, and... The music in Persona is awesome, so you translate that into a music rhythm game, obviously it's gonna be really, really good, and that's exactly what the Persona dancing games ended up being. Yes, it's a little bit of a quirky Persona experience, however, if you like the presentation of Persona, you're gonna enjoy the Persona dancing endless night collection, especially at the price of $22. And that's gonna conclude this video. Again, right now, there are a plethora of great deals over on the PlayStation Store. 
I only went over 10, and that's from the Big in Japan sale. There are more great deals in the Big in Japan sale. A lot of the other Final Fantasy games are on sale. Tales of Berseria is on sale, and a bunch of other games are supremely discounted. So have a look at the store for yourself. Give it a gander, and you can probably find some more games. But that's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.